But first, the growing concerns amongst the business community over the economic direction of the Albanese government. And it's not just business. Even trade union stalwart Bill Kelty's described Labor as being mired in mediocrity. Kelty wants to see more done on tax reform, revised bank lending rules and an overall overhaul of Australia's approach to housing, energy and training, among other crucial policy changes. While the Business Council wants to see Labor pull back on its bullish IR agenda, of course, their big dinner is tonight in Sydney. For more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Shadow Treasurer Angus Taylor. Well, I tell you what, I'm really pleased that the BCA has found its voice. We'll get to them in a moment. But when you get a criticism as public as this from someone like Bill Kelty, you know, saying that you're mediocre, giving them a real blast, that's telling. It absolutely is. And, and the reason is simple, that Australian standard of living has collapsed under Labor. Uh, their policy settings have been wrong mm -hmm. uh, and it's time to get them right. Bill Kelly understands what the back to basics sort of policies are that are going to uh, improve the situation, restore our standard of living, Peter. And it's good to see people speaking out, like him, speaking out on the failures of this government. I've been a bit critical of the BCA, not, not just the BCA, but business groups more broadly. You know, they're quick to go out there on something like The Voice, but their core business is re return value to shareholders you know, grow their prosperity and, and hire their workers and pay them decently. They are now finding their voice. They've come out, they've been critical. This has got to be a welcome move. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big believer in business sticking to the knitting. Yep. It's an old saying, but an important one. Uh, there have been too many inclined uh, to go down the path of woke capitalism in recent years. And the good news is I think we reached peak woke capitalism during The Voice, Peter, yep. and we are seeing a switch back. Uh, we do want to see business fighting for businesses' interests, and that means freer markets, making sure that we've got an industrial relations system that's flexible and that delivers high real wages and good outcomes for, for uh, employers. And I think we can do that, but the business community has to get back to stick to the knitting, and uh, I'm going to continue to encourage them to do exactly that. And it's not just the BCA. We saw, obviously, last week the Minerals Council speaking pretty frankly. Yeah. It's also got to be the individual businesses too, surely, because, you know, back in Kelty's day, Hawke's day, in the 80s and 90s, big business leaders, the chairman and the CEO, they were out there arguing about prosperity, arguing about Australia's future, putting governments of all persuasion under pressure on reform. They have largely been absent. Yeah, they, they set up back in the 80s and 90s uh, decades of prosperity for this country mm -hmm. and we've been living off it ever since and they were were great leaders and we need that kind of leadership back. Uh, we do need a focus on those core issues, those basic issues, getting industrial relations right and making sure our immigration policy is in line uh, with our housing policy of course, mm -hmm. uh, getting rid of red tape, Peter, and uh, we've seen red tape clogging up everything in business. Every small business person is spending way more time now than a few years ago, just doing paperwork, which drives them crazy, rightly. So these are the basics, and this is how you get inflation down, this is how you get prosperity moving again. Let's go to the housing announcement today, because there's yet another announcement from the government today in Rosebury on housing. We still do not have one house built under the government's plans. We've had $24 million reported in the papers being paid to external consultants, it's $6 million in new executive salaries for all the people running the program. A lot of promises, you know, all, all hat and no cowboy. Well, there's nothing there mm. and, and nothing's been delivered. So put this in perspective, we've seen population growth in two years of 1.4 million in Australia. Uh, we haven't seen a house from this program and the best they're promising is 700 houses in a year versus 1.4 million people. It doesn't stack up. Uh, the government's got its settings wrong on this. It's inflationary. Mm -hmm. It's driving up the cost of living, the cost of housing. Uh, it's putting the aspiration of home ownership out of reach of so many younger Australians. This is central to the Australian dream. It always has been, Peter. Uh, and we're losing it. And these policies are not the way to solve the problem.